let me look at these data showing every single character that's in the file. So you see some new things appeared and they're sort of blackened out. You don't see those normally because they're what are called non-printing characters. If you were to print the page, these don't appear. But they're in the file and what they do is to say to a printer, go back to here and go down here. That's carriage return line feed, two characters. They talk to printers. They're among the first uh, of the digital data encodings to tell a printer what to do. And they're in these files. They're different in files for Unix than they are in files for Windows and they're different from the files in Macintosh. It's sort of a pain. And this is a reason why when you move data files between those systems, they don't always act or behave well. It's because of these non-printing characters. So that's one thing. This allows you to see what's actually in there. That's very useful. I'll turn that off for the moment because the reason, the real reason I came here for the purpose of this demonstration, turn that off, is to look at the encoding. So Notepad++ is able to tell me the encoding for the file. And here is a list of possibilities and the one that is marked is ANSI. That's a normal text file. But remember, the data from GBIF are encoded in UTF-8. So if I open one of those files, it will be UTF-8, one or the other of these two. Let me do that to convince you. Now this might sound technical, but it's important because if you don't select the right one, your data will look funny, especially in French-speaking countries. So let me pick a French-speaking country and hope that there's some data in there to show you that. Okay, so I've opened the file for Rwanda. This is the file from GBIF, and it should be in a UTF-8 encoding, and in fact it is. It's this first one, encoded in UTF-8 without a BOM. Don't worry about BOM. What happens if you don't select the correct encoding is that any of your diacritical marks, your accents, or non-Latin characters will not appear correctly. And I'm looking to try to find one in here to see that it does appear correctly. Now this is just a search in the dark, so I don't know where to find one. There's one. There's an E with an accent mark. So if we open this file in the wrong encoding, that E with an accent mark will appear as two characters and not as an E with an accent. So it will mess up your data. So the encoding is important. So. All of that was to get one point across to you that Notepad++ is a good tool, a good friendly tool, useful. And over here, it allows us to pick the correct encoding for the data. Notepad++ told us that it was ANSI. And ANSI is one of the options, it doesn't appear here, but ANSI, sorry, it's this one. ANSI is one of the options under US ASCII. So I'll select US ASCII as the encoding because it matches the original data. And now I can be assured that all the characters in here are correct. They have not been misinterpreted. When you do your data sets from GBIF, you want to select UTF-8. You want the one on the bottom. I'll go through that when we do our other example. But for this data set, it's ASCII. So now, 
to this point, what I have done is prepared ourselves to actually bring these data into Access and interpret it correctly from the original file. To do so, I can give it the project a name. Let me call it Donna Herbarium. All right. I can put a space in there, it's legal, why not? And then create the project. So now Refine is looking at the data with the parameters that we've decided upon. Here it's telling you how much memory it's used and how much is available. And then when it's done, you have what looks like a spreadsheet. So now we're actually in Refine and our data are ready to explore and to manipulate and to find out if they're messy and if they are, to make them less messy. Over here is sort of a workspace. Right now we don't have anything here. We'll see things over here pretty soon. In the top, we have the name of our project and we have a couple of different buttons. The first one is allow us to open projects. We already have one open, so we don't need to use that right now. The next one is export. So I'll go directly there to show you what we can do here. The first is to export a project. If we export a project, what it will do is save the recipe that we've created. The recipe on how to manipulate the data. Okay. But w all of the next set of options are actually exporting the data as they have been refined. So this is where we can create an Excel spreadsheet from our results or a comma separated value from our results and so on. Don't worry about these two. An interesting one here, which in itself is sufficient to make Refine a useful tool, is a custom tabular export. We'll use this later. And this is what it looks like. It's a recipe to describe how you would like the data to look. So, even if we do nothing else to Alex's data, we can use this to export some part of it or to change some part of it. We can do that by, for example, if I deselect here, there are no fields in my export. That's not terribly useful. So, let me put some things back in there. Like, I want the name string. I want Brahms. I want the group, year, month, and day. So I'm just choosing the columns that I want in my export. Then on the right, I have plenty of different options about what else to do. The first one is what should I do with cells that I have changed in Refine? Next one is how should I format the dates? So I can change date formats just by exporting here and there are other options here. And then I can do things about the time. So this allows me quickly to export the data by clicking on download. I can download and create all of these different formats. I can also export it as UTF-8. That's my first option. It came in as ANSI. I can export it as UTF-8. So Refine is a tool already to allow you to make your data into a more standard format, even if you use it for nothing else. I won't talk about the other two options right now. So I will do a download. And here's the file that I downloaded. I'll open it in Notepad++. And you can see that I have just those columns that I chose and that they're separated by something. I don't know what that is. Let me find out what that is by viewing all the characters. This is the symbol for a tab character. So it's put tabs in between all of the fields 
and it's put one character at the end, a line feed. So this is not a Windows compatible text file. Windows wants two characters here. It wants a carriage return and a line feed. So now that we've looked at it, we can say that's not going to work. I don't want that. Let me close that file and go back to refine and try again. Export. I want comma separated values. Now what did I do? I exported the whole file. I didn't choose my individual columns. Yes, I have commas, as I had hoped. And I exported the whole thing as comma separated, but I didn't set the columns that I wanted. And I still have the line feeds only. So what, did I, what have I done? Not what I wanted, again. I'm really good at doing what I don't want to do, which is why I tend to get better at using software over time. Remember, we tried a custom tabular export, and we chose some fields. Doesn't really matter which ones I choose for the purpose of a demonstration. Those three. So, all's well here. I'll go to download. I did not want tab separated values. I wanted comma separated values. And right here is the line separator. This is a uh, code that tells me I just want a line feed. Just one character, not two. And I can change that. And that's the code for it. Now if I download it. Now my data are exactly how I wanted them comma separated and made for Windows. So it gives you that kind of power. And that's probably a good place to stop for now. I'll come back and continue with a sort of exploration of the data. Right now I've just sort of told you getting data in and getting data out of Refine and what the power of some of the, those capabilities is.